When calculating payments, we need to consider compounding. How is the quoted interest rate compounded? Four things must agree, the N, the IY, the payment, and the compounding. When I say agree, they must be stated in the same time period. So if one is monthly, they all must be monthly. Two different types of rates. Your annual percentage rate, also known as your nominal rate, that's your APR, or in your calculator, it's entered as a NOM. That's your quoted or stated rate. So when the bank quotes you a rate, when they post a rate, when they say this is the rate we're going to be charging, it's an APR. And it has to be by regulation, despite the fact that it's actually the lower number. This number is not annually compounded. So a monthly rate would be an APR. A biweekly rate would be an APR, a semi-annual rate, and so forth would be an APR. Your equivalent or effective annual rate, your EAR, or it goes into your calculator as your EFF, is the annually compounded rate. So this is the equivalent rate if it was annually compounded. So we're not going to use the EAR when doing our calculations. We're always going to be do using the APR. But there is more than one APR, and we need to make sure we're using the correct one. So let's consider a question. Let's say I have a fixed rate mortgage and a variable rate mortgage. By regulation, fixed rate mortgages are quoted as semi-annual compounding. Variable rate mortgages are quoted at monthly compounding and loans are quoted monthly compounding as well too. Why are they different? I don't know, I'm sure there's some reason in history, but that is the way they are and you do need to know that. So if you're doing monthly payments with a variable rate mortgage or with a loan, you can just take the stated rate divide it by 12 and enter it into your calculator. But if it's a fixed rate mortgage, you need to convert it, which we will cover in another video. But looking at these two mortgages, they're both quoted at 3%, so you'd think you're paying the same rate, but you're not because the compounding is different. So again, with a fixed rate mortgage, it is compounded semi-annually. The variable rate mortgage is quoted monthly. So how many periods is that? Semi-annual, semi means half, twice a year. Monthly compounding is 12 times a year. So consider it this way. Let's say you have American dollars and let's say you have Hong Kong dollars. Can you compare the two? Not directly, a Hong Kong dollar is a, worth a lot less than an American dollar. So how would you compare them? Well, you could convert them both to Canadian dollars. So that's what we're going to do. These are both APRs. So these are both APRs. Because semi-annual is not annually compounded and monthly is not annually compounded. So they're both APRs. And we're going to convert them both to EARs. So how are we going to do that? Let's take a look at your calculator. Over the two key, it says I-C-O-N-V. That stands for interest rate conversion, and you're going to use this key quite a bit. Anytime something is over a key, you must press the second function first. So press second and I-C-O-N-V, and you should see that it now says NOM. So what's my nominal or my APR rate? It is 3%, and once again, I enter it as a 3. I can press down twice or up once to get to CY. After the 3, don't forget to hit Enter. I scroll down to CY, and for CY, I enter 2. I'm dealing with the fixed rate mortgage. Semi-annually compounded means twice per year. 2, don't forget to hit Enter. Scroll back up once to the effective rate, and then I'm going to hit the compute key. I hit compute and it gives me the answer 3.02%. So we see because the rate is quite small, because the compound is only twice per year, the interest, the difference is not much. So that's the fixed rate. Let's try the variable rate. Nominal rate is the same, it's also three. 
going to go to my CY. How many compounding periods do I have per year if it's monthly? Well, I have 12. Remember, don't forget to hit enter. I'm going to go to my EFF and I'm going to compute it. And we get 3.04%. So not a huge difference, but we do see that a variable rate mortgage is actually slightly more expensive than a fixed rate mortgage of the same dollar value.